Ladies and gentlemen and others, it's spoiler in time. I'm Tom Merritt, and today on the show, we are going to spoil The Shield Season 7, Episode 1, uh, True Detective Season 2 Finale, Rick and Morty Season 2, Episode 3, Sneaky Pete, the pilot from Amazon, uh, first half of Season 1 of Star Wars Rebels, but Brian Brushwood... Before that, I need you to agree to something with me. Okay. I, I'm willing to agree to just about anything you propose. Right. Now, this show is at spoiler in time, but it is a bonus episode to Cord Killers. Am I not correct? Yeah, sure, sure. It's bonus. Yeah. It's extra. It's, it's, it's so, the icing on top. Yeah. You and I and, and Bryce and Jackie, uh, we're, we're sort of the team that puts together Cord Killers, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I would say I would say that us and our esteemed guests are the reason the show exists. Right. Okay. So you agree that we we are a team who puts together cord killers. Yeah. Well, I mean, okay, I great. As, Time as for the movie I think draft. about it, I, as I think about it, we're team cord killers. <laughs> hey, we're winning, Brian. We're ah, dude, team cord killers. I'm so thrilled. That the cord killers are killing it. That's amazing. <laughs> it took me a while to realize uh, where you're headed listen, there. Honestly, I'm just kidding. Uh, I could not be happier that Milongo and Christy Gates are representing Team Cord Killers and running away with this. Actually, it's not true. I could be happier if Team DDS was actually winning, <laughs> but they're really, after this weekend, is just no chance of that. Mission Impossible did great. It got it did 107 million. Uh, that's fine. Whatever. Fantastic Four tanked it. 25 million. We're done. It's over. I think DTNS will hit second place uh, without too much trouble. Probably we'll take it to the last week, though, of availability. But there's no catching cord killers. It's it's so funny because when we did the draft, it was so painfully obvious to everyone that you were going to run away with it and you broke the game by winning so very hard. And yet here we are, uh, outside of team cord killers, of course, got the genuine... Uh, value uh, out of Jurassic World. They they nabbed the surprise and they're creeping up on a billion dollars and we'll probably creep over that over the next couple of weeks. Um, and meanwhile, everybody else, the spread is 562 to 618. There is a, yeah. a $57 million spread. That is astonishing that, that all of us ended up so close to each other. And by the way, D Team DTNS not in last place anymore. Uh, we've actually climbed <laughs> out. And Team DTNS with the top dollar per dollar spent movie with the seven bones we spent on Mission Impossible. Seven dollars. It's you're just gonna get me mad all over again. <laughs> well, that's why everybody was so pissed, right? They're looking. They thought Fantastic Four would do better. Uh, they thought you know, rightly that Mission Impossible would do very well, uh, and Ant Man we got away with for eighteen bucks. We spent more on Ant Man than Mission Impossible. Hilarious! I, got, I gotta tell you, man. Again, I'm astonished. With over a thousand entries, uh, the chat realm winner is currently one person. No, only only one person had the idea to combine Furious Seven, Jurassic World, Mad Max, or Max pixels mission impossible uh rogue nation and that uh is jedi wing night night um that's that's a, that's astonishing to me isn't that crazy that there's yeah. so many com combinations and that and that it's always one person who wins that's amazing but i have found someone that i can point my finger at and blame for us losing yeah ryan uh is it josh, josh trank, trank? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, dude. Let's let's talk about this. This is some Hollywood insider gossip. Uh, have you ever seen something like this? Have you ever seen? Th there's almost a you know in in wrestling they call it kayfabe. The, this idea that you keep up the pretense that this is authentic beef you have with another person and that you actually hate him and that you uh, are are not actually doing a choreographed dance in the ring. And that's largely gone from pro wrestling now. You have something different in its stead. But I feel like kayfabe has still been alive and well in Hollywood in that it is your job to grin and say, oh, well, you know, that was difficult, but we got through it really happy. It's uh, uh, Justin Robert Young told me that everybody's response to your pitch in Hollywood is exactly the same. It's always a great project. You're always an amazing talent, and it's going to do great somewhere, just not here. That is the closest to a negative no that you ever get. 
Right, because uh, the Hollywood has built up a thick skin over like, mm, the person I'm turning down today might run the studio tomorrow, so I should be nice to everyone just in case. Uh, and that's fine. Josh Trank broke that by posting on Twitter that he had a cut of Fantastic Four that if he had been allowed to release it, everybody would have loved. And then he pulled that Twitter post. Yeah... That's pretty amazing. Um, uh, it, it, what what was doubly fascinating was watching uh, Max Landis uh, kind of speak on the fringes of this, saying like, "Hey, man, I work with him. Uh, you know, he was. Uh, we were lucky, and we were very, very lucky that our first project was one that was easy and successful. Uh, I, I I know that it doesn't always go that way. Uh, you know, it turns out that you know I was fortunate." in that I didn't have my next project after that be a multi-million dollar, you know, studio run extravaganza. Yeah, I, you know, it's uh, sad but true that I had agreed to be on iFanboy with Ron Richards to talk about Fantastic Four this weekend. And I got a hasty email from Ron on Friday uh, relieving me of that obligation because he had just watched the movie and I hadn't seen it yet. And he said he could not in good conscience make me more oh watch the movie. Oh my gosh! That is amazing, Tom! <laughs> yeah. And uh, so poor Jeff Kanata was on iFanboy oh <laughs> instead. Oh my god. Because uh, he had already seen it too. But it's that bad that people are like, oh no, I would never, I would never do that to you. It's like, tough uh, because there, there, there was a good long two or three year stretch where the Fantastic Four was my favorite uh, Marvel comic, full stop. Like, uh, you know, it, 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 you know, there were various times where it was Hulk and Iron Man and Spider Man, but uh, but there was a good chunk where it was Fantastic Four. And if you told eighth grade Brian that you know that uh, grown up Brian would not bother to go see a objectively high quality or you know uh, made movie give or take um you know because he heard that the script was so bad and that the third act was tacked on and made no sense that's insane yeah well i went to see mission impossible and said instead and enjoyed it very much uh let's do some triage the occasional feedback section of spoiler in time from jp carrion who says guys guys can i make a suggestion when doing spoiler in time if you start watching a TV show and don't like it, don't keep spoiling it. This entire True Detective season, both of you have been, should I say it, less than enthusiastic about the show, so why keep putting yourselves through it if you don't like it? I think the show could use those seven to ten minutes to talk about another series, or how about a movie? Bottom line, this is your show. Even when you clearly don't enjoy a show but talk about it, I watch. But with so much positive stuff to watch, why focus on one you don't like? Again, my two cents, pick something you enjoy and spoil that. Also, I hate seeing Tom's sad face when he talks about True Detective. Hashtag sad <laughs> okay, we'll get ready to see more of that because we're going to talk about the finale here shortly. Uh, the I, I think the answer is that there have been enough situations where we were afraid that a show was going to be terrible, but it ended up paying off. That 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 in those situations where a show gets bad and then gets good, it's worth it to watch us kind of be the everyman's, you know, uh, perspective of like, oh, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's all not worth it. Oh, my God, what a payoff. And and I would say, for example, um, uh, for me, less than or more so than Tom, I think The Leftovers was like that. I think that was really slow to get started. But I think once I got into it, I loved it for the characters and I liked it a lot. Uh, the Shield season one uh, was that for me. Dude. I, I watched it. I kept watching it because Brian and Jeff – both are promised me that it was the best thing on television, and it took me a while to get to that point, but I'm really glad I did. Uh, for a lot of people, it's The Wire. They start watching season one of The Wire, and they're like, I don't get it. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's part of it. Also, if we only spoiled things we like, I feel like that would be disingenuous somehow. Like, you know, that then it's just like everything's happy, and then we get – some people not liking the that's fact a, that like, that's a all totally you ever do different, is talk about good TV shows. I want to know about the bad ones, too. That's, that's a totally different show that we plan to launch next year called Wasn't That Great with Brian and Tom. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, that's uh, literally all we say about everything. Like, oh, man, right, wasn't that great? I, I, I get JP. I, in fact, I really respect JP letting us off the hook. Like, come on, guys. Don't put yourself through that. But I think we choose when to do that very carefully. 
Agreed. Hey, uh, we got a number of emails uh, regarding the movie draft and and some more, you know, uh, awesome harebrained schemes to correct things. Uh, I'm, I'm going to hold off on reading these this time and just say that uh, at this point, we're going to fold everything into, you know, uh, you know, us and Justin talking through this. Right. Would you yeah. say that's your fair? emails have been read and will contribute to that conversation. Don't fear that. Yeah. Uh, great stuff. And thank you to to everybody who sends stuff in. Absolutely. Great. Really interesting and creative ideas. And I imagine our final solution. (laughs) (laughs) Tom, uh, the man in the high castle has not come out yet. Why are you already talking about that? (laughs) What we end up doing uh, will will actually uh, involve probably a combination of lots of your ideas. (laughs) <laughs> All right. Uh, hey, so in? how about that Star Wars Rebels that you mentioned on Card Killers? <laughs> I, I okay. Now, now here's the thing. Everything that I am about to say should be understood with the fact that it's colored. My experience with Star Wars Rebels was uh, was definitely affected by the fact that we had just finished watching the original trilogy. My daughter loved it. She's into Star Wars. She is now experiencing what I experienced, you know, 30 years ago, uh, and. I, I, I can't divorce my experience from that. However, in that bubble, in that experience, with my daughter watching Rebels, uh, and it's so... And, and by the way, I did also watch the first couple episodes of Clone Wars and still hated that universe. I hate everything in the prequel space. Arguing about trade crap and goofy cartoony robot. Get out of here. Uh, Star Wars Rebels takes place in the universe that I adore from the expanded universe of the late 90s, early 2000s. It it is is like the books. There is a lightsaber, but there's no arguing about, you know, the the Jedi code of this, that, you know, bureaucracy nonsense. I loved it, man. Tom, I'm loving it. I'm loving Rebels, and and it's so good that I'm refusing to watch it except for when the whole family is gathered. Because I'm uh, so I can enjoy it. The funny thing about Star Wars Rebels is that it is in the prequel universe, right? It is That's, technically it is in the prequel universe, but they are so smart because all of the visual and audio cues are from the middle three, correct? From but, the first but, three movies, but also so that someone like you doesn't sit there and go, <laughs> right? You feel like, oh. That's the right John Williams sound cue. Like, oh, that's, you know, that's actually a character from the middle three universe. And here's the thing about Clone Wars, just as a side note, not a spoiler on Clone Wars, season two, I kind of muddled through season one because I'm not bothered by the prequel universe that much. And I'm like, eh, you know, okay, there's some good parts, there's some bad parts. Season two really starts to feel like they're doing a good job with that. And you get less of that icky prequel feeling to it. Star Wars Rebels is them going 100% that way and saying, let's let's just do the things that we know people love from those original three movies. Well, there's also a, a harder core grittiness to Rebels. There are actual human stormtrooper, uh, st- stormtroopers who die. They, they are not clones. They are not robots. They, uh, these are recruits who went to the Imperial Academy, who had dreams of becoming a commander, and instead die on some random-ass Star Destroyer. Um, there's more muscle. There is more gristle in this, in this world than there is in the Clone Wars. Clone Wars was, I think... Um, uh, well, you have a, you you you've got to watch Clone Wars farther in. I'm only in okay. season two, and I'm already seeing a huge change. And I'm starting to see why people whose opinions I respect and wouldn't have thought would have liked Clone Wars are liking it. Okay, but that's a whole other separate conversation. Star Wars Rebels, I 100% agree with you. Grittier, more real feels like the things you love about Star Wars in uh, the best. By, by the way, the last episode that we watched was the one that drew Bonnie in. She kind of was half watching and then realized she leans over and she's like, oh my God, they wrote the movie Pitch Black into an episode. And I was like, yeah, this is Rebels. And it was like, it was amazing. So uh, very, very good. Really enjoying it. Yeah. And and the cool thing is you're in for a few more appearances by folks's uh, uh, that you will care about and are pretty amazing. So, uh, they're, they do some weird things with Disney XD where they, they have special movies. So I, I don't know if you ran into that with the pilot. Yeah. Like there was a special I, I, I movie had to buy, I had to pilot. buy the pilot separate from yeah. the series, but which, which uh, it didn't and there's, there's me. a final episode, which 
Some places count it as the first episode of next season. Other places count it as the final episode of last season. Uh, but there's there's another episode that they came out like a month or so ago uh, that may or may not be part of the regular run, too. And it's great. Yeah, right on, man. All right, let's talk about Sneaky Pete. Uh, Brian Cranston, executive producing a pilot for Amazon. And you definitely need to watch this all the way to the end. Uh, not just because you're looking for Brian Cranston to show up, uh, but because I, I don't know about you, Brian, but I thought it took a couple hard right turns towards the end that made this a lot more interesting than I thought it was going to be. Well, it's funny because like I, I kept trying to figure out what to make of it. Uh, like I watched the beginning. I'm like, oh, this is Breaking Bad kind of drama. And then this it is got, Breaking Good. Right. right? Exactly. A and bad then, guy who may get drawn into doing good things. That's right. what I was thinking. But 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 then it got to lighthearted territory. I'm like, oh, wait, no, this is USA's psych you know that's that's what this is and then and you know i wrote it along and that's about the time that bonnie again you know was walking around and got drawn in and we're like oh dude this will be a lot of fun for both of us to watch together but then you're right at the end it, it gave you a hard reminder it went into locked stock and two smoking barrels snatch territory at the very end when you're like oh wait no this is a world with consequences and it's dark and it's crazy um I loved it. I love the show. I love the uh, yes, it is a lighthearted conceit. Yes, it is a f um I don't want to say a familiar trope, but it's certainly a familiar interaction. It's character driven. Still loved it. Loved all I, I thought all of the performances were exquisite. I thought that it was the it struck the right balance of lightness. Um my only regret is that there's not 12 more episodes for me to watch right now. Yeah, the the uh the performances of uh, TV character actress Margot Martindale uh, is especially good. That's the grandma, right? What's that? The, she's the grandma. Yeah, she Audrey was. She grandma. was amazing. She was exquisite. That that whole like egg collecting thing, talking about foxes in the hen house and stuff. Right, and that's that's your that's one of those turns that I'm talking about where you're like, oh wait. This was the woman who pointed out earlier in the episode that she can tell whether to trust people or not. And she's trusting him, but letting on that maybe she knows that she shouldn't trust him. Yeah. Uh, so why is she trust? You know, there's there's a lot of complexity going on there. And then one of the things about Pete is he's he's a classic con man. This is something I learned from watching you, Brian. Is the best way to hide something is to use the truth, right? Right. So he is he is constantly doing that, like not trying to create a lie, just use the truths that he knows around him uh, and that are part of him to create a you know a defense so they don't see through what is the central lie, which is that he's not Pete. Uh, and then we get to the end, and Brian Cranston's character pulls that on him. Yeah. And it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, you didn't think that I didn't know that all of this is going on. Well, guess what? You're working for me now. Uh, dude, no, it, it's extraordinary and, and terrifying in in that end scene. It was so great. Um, uh, full disclosure, uh, there was there was a TV project that I got to uh, shoot a little bit with Brian Cranston with. And it's so great to see Brian Cranston again as not Walter White, but also not, you know, the dad from uh, uh, from Malcolm in the Middle, right? No, it's, he's uh, Fring. He's he's so good. He's so good, man. It was, it he's was Gus Fring in this episode. Is oh, that, my God. My yeah, guess. no, he is. He is. He's, yeah. He, yeah, no, it's great. Yeah, uh, this is really good, and I agree with you. I am um, chomping at the bit to watch the next one. And, and 70 minutes into this, I wasn't sure I was going to be chomping at the bit to watch the next one. So it definitely is some something that you have to stick with all the way through the 90 minutes or so. Well, By the way, I say 70 minutes, it might only be 70 minutes, but like 50 minutes. Sure. In, close to the end. I still wasn't convinced. And then I got convinced really fast. By the and way, now I can't wait to see it. Bonnie happen. totally nailed uh, the skip. The skip who skip bail uh, is uh, what is one of the cops from The Wire, which I it took me a while to, to place. The, the bald guy who they capture. Oh, is, right. He's one of the dock workers, right? Uh, no, no. He's the partner. Remember, there, there, oh, he's there's, the par he's the there's, there's two That's foot right. soldier what cops. What has he been in? Yeah. Too? Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, he, he's sort of the bruiser of of the two of the two street level oh, right. cops. He's uh, Fisk's dad in Daredevil as well. Oh my God, that's right. I, I yes, that's where I saw him. What's funny is I kept wanting to make him uh, 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 the, the kingpin, but I knew he was uh, wasn't. That's the yes, yeah. of course. No, it's a it, he's he's a he's a great actor. Um, all right, so that's Sneaky Pete. Let's quickly touch on Rick and Morty 
Auto-erotic assimilation, episode three. Just an, I, I don't know if I feel like they're topping themselves every time or just starting in a whole new direction and killing it. We've talked about this before, but when I, it took me months of trying to get Justin to watch Rick and Morty. And when he did, five minutes in, he was like, well, why didn't you just tell me it was a better version of Doctor Who? And and this is the thing, right? Their scripts are so tight. And I think part of it is the constraints of their their three act, 22 minute you know, formula. Uh but man, do they nail it. Like, like now all of a sudden, now they're done doing laps around the TARDIS. Now they're doing laps around the Enterprise as well, you know, riffing on the idea of expanding what happens if somebody, you know, if, if somebody had sex with the Borg and made the Borg fall in love with them, you know, but also there's this other Borg that, uh, that is, that is in the friend zone. That with was my another, favorite another moment Borg. is when the Borg lands and it's like this awkward, like the, where you think it's supposed to go is she tries to hide that he's not an assimilated individual but instead it becomes the awkward like oh yeah this is my uh friend and yeah oh i think he wants to be more than friends with you but it's freaking the, like two hive mind consciences that con that's great it's 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 amazing uh by the way out of everything in this episode the thing that that nobody i i've n nobody seems to want to talk about it but i find it extraordinary is the casual suicide attempt they throw in in the last 20 seconds of the episode. That is amazing to me. Did, did you miss that? Well, I, I don't remember it. What are you talking about? Uh, okay, so, uh, you know, Rick comes back home, and he's obviously right. affected by his time with Unity or whatever, But the, and then some music starts playing, and he casually, uh, he has two bulbs, and oh, he, right. yeah, he yeah, sets yeah, yeah. in a bulb, bulb and, he and he reanimates yeah. a, a, an alien, pets it, and then disintegrates it, and the bulb discharges. He sets himself in the next one, and only by the fact that he was too drunk and passed out moments before it fired. I mean, he put a shotgun in his mouth and went no, to I kill see himself. I, see it. I didn't read it that way. Oh, my gosh. Uh, there's no... I just read it as self-abuse. No, no, like, like he, it was a, it was a full on suicide attempt and I encourage you to rewatch okay. it. Uh, he attempts suicide, but is That's too drunk. I haven't brought up the suicide attempt because I didn't think it was a suicide attempt. Um, uh, I, I'll show you, uh, once we're off the air, I'll, Look, I'll show you that clip I don't want you again. to convince me it was, I'm just telling you the way I read it. You know what, what someone online, uh, made an interesting point about huh. is that in an alternate universe, Rick probably killed himself. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, so dark. It's too dark. Really it's too dark. Oh, uh, dark truth uh, Neshcom is our new meme. It's you nodding at the camera. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's spooky. Uh -oh. But yeah, I I I love the, I love that it did everything I wanted. Like, as soon as I realized, oh, it's going to be a love story with the hive consciousness, I'm like, oh, then he should just talk to everybody, and he does, right? Yes. Like, most most stories would have skimped on that and, and said, well, that'll be too confusing for the viewer, so we'll have him do that a couple of times, but most of the time he'll talk to the same person, and he doesn't. He's always, like, a couple of people circle back, but he's mostly always talking to somebody different all the time and he's fine with that yeah by the way uh totally loved that moment when rick projects the voice of dan Harmon onto the universe when he's sitting on a couch saying like oh that's so great that you've made a, a whole tv sh show for me uh oh it's canceled oh wait it's back now i'm bored and then and then at some point he says something and then and it cuts to the tv show and I've only watched like maybe five or seven episodes of Community, but even I was able to clearly identify all of the <laughs> characters that were definitely Community that he was watching. I mean, definitely not Community because that would have been a kind of infringement and really, you know, <laughs> upsetting, but totally Community. Yes. Uh, yeah, that was brilliant. The whole thing is, is brilliant. Even, even the little side story, the B story of... of them at home. Oh my God. I, 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 in fact, out of the whole show, that was the part that, you know, Bonnie doesn't enjoy. She can't handle the, the squeaky voices on most animated shows, but she does enjoy me telling them the jokes that I saw from them. So, uh, that whole thing where the guy, you know, the alien grabs the translator and is like, yes, I do have space aids, which he was curing, but, but he wanted also. to sell it and make a huge profit. But it was, it was amazing. Uh, so good. All right. Let's uh, take a break from amazing 
and talk about the season finale of True Detective. And uh, we understand J.P. Carey, and if you need to skip ahead, <laughs> I'll try not to be sad. True Detective recap, it's finally over, says Wired. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. I went into this episode with the idea that, okay, this is going to be a 90-minute episode. I'm going to treat it like a movie. I'm going to pretend this is the True Detective movie. And there was once a TV show called True Detective, but I'm going to forget about that. And I'm going to make this a movie. And that worked about halfway. All of a sudden, that opening scene with Bezaridis uh, and... Uh, and uh, oh, I'm, I want to call him Gardaki for some reason, but it's... Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Velcoro. Uh, felt like a nice opening, like throwing you in the middle of a plot, making you kind of figure out what's going on, right? Uh, and, and, and Vince Vaughn's scene with his wife didn't feel like a stilted, totally expected confrontation between two characters, but felt fresh because I was taking these new eyes to it. I actually like that Velcoro did not survive. I like that Vince Vaughn had to pay for his sins by trudging through the desert haunted by the ghost of his pasts. Uh, but in the end, it, just, it, it felt like I had trudged through the desert and didn't quite make it out. You know, Tom, I like to think that I'm an optimist. I like to think that, uh, that I believe that things will pay off in the end. And I definitely, definitely, definitely regret suggesting that things were going to pay off in the end <laughs> it, it it just didn't i actually feel like uh last week's episode was pretty good and the week before that you know with the crazy um uh eyes wide shut party i think they were uh, they were finally getting somewhere yeah what a shame it's it's so incredible to me that all of the pieces could be exactly right. The acting was exquisite. The backstories were complicated and haunting. Uh, the universe was interesting and fascinating. And yet, the storytelling, I mean, I just got to lay everything at the feet of, of the director, right? Like, it's like the storytelling so, yeah. was just and too awkward, writer. took too long. But, but, but again, the writer created that world. There's, uh, that's an editor's job. The editor I, is who failed here because he didn't get to the good stuff fast enough. Because uh, I keep looking on paper and saying, this is a great story. Like when I want to retell what happened individually, it sounds like a compelling story. Like the whole idea that Casper's death didn't have anything to do with the Vinci uh, uh, corruption, but by accident revealed it, but yet revealed it because of the sins of the father of Casper, who was, uh, was you know, involved with this woman and then stole her diamonds and killed uh, their parents in front of them. Like, that sounds like a great story. I really want to see that story someday. Uh, but that story was just sort of lightly laid upon all of this other stuff. Yeah, and again, it's like I don't want to be that asshole sitting in Texas telling Hollywood how to do its job, but uh, I, I will say that this ultimately missed its mark. Uh, I, I'll certainly be back for season three on this. Uh, I, yeah, I certainly too, sure. applaud the ambition of trying to go to such a drastically different world. I absolutely applaud the amazing acting job job from everybody in there. I don't think there was a bad actor in the mix. I, I think there well was shot it, too. I thought the cinematography was excellent. Absolutely, absolutely. I think I think ultimately it was just a it just died a, a death of pacing. Right. It would be interesting to rewatch this on no, demand. Knowing, yeah, knowing knowing Binge the it. backstory, right? Or yeah, even, it might, even that, you know, or, that's the one thing you were talking about last week, Brian, that I think might be true is a second viewing of this could change everything for you. Yeah, I agree. Unfortunately, I won't do it. I got too much other yeah, stuff I don't to think watch. I'll do it too. But, uh, but I mean, I knew I, I, I was trying to do this, like, just just act like the previous seasons, not even season one and all of season two never happened and see if you can enjoy it. It worked until they got to the train station. And at that point, I found myself on my phone trying to look up what train station that was in the L.A. area because I didn't recognize yeah, it. Yeah, right that's away. not the best sign. Airline. That does not indicate uh, if they were moder monitoring you for uh, advertising purposes, they would not indicate yeah. that as high involvement with the episode. No. Uh, but let's finish up with The Shield, the final season. Dude, this is happening. This is happening, dude. This is your world. You now are enjoying little bits of candy, knowing this is the last you will ever get to have them. Uh, I bought 
full disclosure, I bought uh, the entire uh, seventh season so that I could follow along with you. Started watching this episode, fell asleep halfway through because it was late at night. So uh, <laughs> tell, tell me what it was like. Uh, it's great. Uh, this is where everybody says like it becomes a thrill ride that just doesn't stop. I can barely remember everything that happened in this a particular episode because it's all blending together for me at this point, right? Shane is on a trip to nowhere. And in, in this, I guess the significant thing in this episode is Shane gets thrown back in with Vic and Gardaki uh, by order of whims because somehow... Uh, uh, Vic is able to get his hearing delayed 30 days uh, because of the machinations in, involving uh, the businessman that, that he's working with, involving uh, Aceveda's influence, uh, even though I, it's all oh, this is the closest to unbelievable that the shield has gotten for me is that he could walk out on a hearing and still be able to just keep working for 30 days. But but it's all explained but but again there. but again like as a viewer what matters is is you feel that noose tightening and you see that there's a deadline and you're like there will yeah. definitely be a binary outcome to this and it's going to happen very very soon well but it starts to feel like is there a binary outcome or can Vic Mackey just always escape right but that's also intentional that they also want you to to wonder that about Vic Mackey. Is is he untouchable? Is he Ronald Reagan? Uh, you also get Andrea from The Walking Dead showing up uh, sort of inexplicably as somebody from uh, immigration who could help out. And I assume she's the star guest character uh, for the season. Uh, this is so, uh, ICE? Yeah. Yeah, right on. Uh, and you see Billings get pulled back into work uh, because they sort of unravel his false workers' compensation claim, uh, which I don't even know why. I don't even care. I was hoping that that Wagenbach would just bust him on the vending machine thing uh, and Billings would be out of a job, but I guess they needed that actor. He was signed on for the season or something, so <laughs> they brought him back. Uh, okay, so w what are the big questions going into this next episode for you? Okay, can Shane continue to convince uh, what's-his-name uh, not Zadofian, but the other Armenian, the Armenian that's in prison, right. that he can help him. Can he help him? Uh, can he keep him, Zarian, I guess, from killing Vic's family? Like, this is high effing stakes. Uh, Vic and Gardaki have got to figure out how to keep that from happening and uh, undo Shane, because they are both sworn to vengeance against Shane at this point, but they need to play with him for now. So that's an incredibly uneasy alliance going on there. Uh, and it's and it's all about keeping the Armenians happy, keeping the Armenians angry at the Mexicans uh, for various reasons, uh, because that is politically uh, expedient. And Wims trying to keep Farmington open as a police station but but here's the important thing do you find yourself with your cell phone in hand trying to figure out exactly the details of farmington's public transportation system no like, uh, no oh no, no you don't okay so that's the no. difference between this show in fact and the, the only one. reason my cell phone's in my hand is because i'm watching this on my phone because <laughs> it's the easiest way for me to watch it because i don't want to miss it which by the way is is almost like an unfair kind of upgrade to the quality of it because you know uh, the shield was shot back in the days of SD. Are are you are are they doing HD at this point? Because it was in that awkward transition phase. It started in the late. No, there's 90s. no HD version of this. Okay, so so that means that uh, I guess that does speak to my point because you, by watching it on your phone, you notice less of the uh, HD quality. Yeah, um, the the it, the quality looks normal. When I put it up on an actual big screen TV, it does it does then you wash can tell. out. But even then, I don't care. Like I don't really notice it. I just get lost in the story. Hey, uh, I just realized we forgot to mention in both the show and now that I watched uh, this morning. I ended up uh, getting roped into uh, Hot Girls Wanted, which was the documentary from uh, produced by Rashida Jones um, that follows the journey of uh, a few 19 year old ish girls, uh, one of which I haven't watched that. Um, OK, um, I, 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 I won't give any details, just sort of thoughts about what it made me feel uh and i kind of want to ask uh bryce uh, you watched yes. it right yes i did i recommended um, it a few weeks good. ago yeah it uh it it really affected me and i don't know why or how um like like for example 
it is on its surface, uh, take two, <clears throat> it is on its surface a little bit preachy um, and a little bit tra traditional family values and sort of heavy handed in that regard. Especially at the beginning. Yeah. Well, you could kind of smell where they're heading stuff up and, and they eventually tie things up in that narrative yeah. uh, in, in a documentary way. Um, but it also is very honest and very real. And I, I found myself, he awkwardly announced on this podcast, uh, I found myself looking up the Twitter feeds of all of these adult people porn stars you well, know i mean because, that's why they show it to you i'm sure it's a little bit of maybe proof yeah that it well, happened. well, well and, and it also it, it leapt out of the screen the experience all of a sudden it was part of the experience was me looking at the twitter feeds of these of these of these girls and it, right. it, it was it was extraordinary in that regard um i i, I don't know i i do you do you you said it it affected you could you is there an emotion you could closely ascribe to it is it a confusion? worry confusion you know be, well, well because there's a number of different roles it's like you know as an, an american in the united states you know i'm a consumer of pornography but also right. i have three daughters uh you yeah. know and and so it's like i wasn't entirely sure what my role was and and as a result i was just kind of cast adrift the entire time oh so so maybe maybe you, it was uh, uh, guilt on no, some no, level no 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 it, it was it was like watching it i didn't know what i was supposed to feel like mm. like it was or what i was supposed to feel was not clear to me right okay. um and 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 again not that you need to force me into a corner but but it is it, it is a a morally and psychologically and and public health uh, style ambiguous issue. It is something that that we are only coming to terms terms with as a society for the first time in you know all of our history right. in the last twenty years, basically. So, um, I, um, uh, did you feel any element of pity? No, no, no. I I felt like they were at all times all of the girls, and in fact, that would have turned me off if if I felt like I was being manipulated into feeling pity. I, I, I would have not enjoyed it. But okay. instead, I felt like at all times, all of the girls were very aware of their decisions, that they were choosing it, and then they were they were choosing to step in, and, and they were cho choosing to step out. Um, it, it, was, it was a fascinating experience, partly because I went in confused, mm -hmm. because I didn't understand why Netflix only had it ranked at two stars, yet Rotten mm -hmm. Tomatoes had it at like 93% positive reviews. Right, you're going from the populace comparing to critical review. Yeah, and I, exactly. So so, so I didn't know what to expect, and it's rare for me to go into, uh, you know, especially a documentary, not knowing or, or even having the slightest suspicion about how, I feel, how I'll feel. Mm -hmm. At any rate, I, I, I thought it was fascinating, uh, and I, I, I recommend taking the experience, and I'd love to hear what you guys think of the, uh, the ultimate... Um, you know, journey that you go on. Cordkillers at gmail.com. Yep. And that's it for spoiler in time. Thanks everybody for watching. We will see you next week or when we run into you accidentally at the grocery store. I mean, if we know it's you, you if might you say us, I. and then we'll be like, because that's what we do. We buy him butter. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>